You are listening to the Tri-Quarter Transmissions and Five-Year Mission Episode One. And now, here are Craig and Jeff. made of episode number one this is the series where the tricorder transmissions and five-year mission uh, join together to bring you background information on each one of their tracks and today we are starting with the first track of the first album year one and that is the cage and here with me right now is mike rittenhouse hello how's everything sir very good Excellent. So we're, we're kicking off this new series tonight, and uh, in a few minutes we'll be hearing from uh, all, uh, all five of you guys, but I wanted to just really quick sit down with you and reiterate what we're doing here, give your, uh, the audience a little bit of a chance to, to digest the concept of this series, and it's, it's going to be a pretty long one. Um, if we're doing one every episode, it's going to be uh, eventually... <laughs> over 80 episodes yeah so it looks like uh we're, we're running really uh, long on our on our chats and each song is kind of averaging about 15 to 20 minutes so uh <laughs> we're gonna break them into these bite-sized episodes so that uh, the listeners don't have too much to take in in one shot but we're gonna be doing them weekly they're gonna be coming out on wednesdays we're gonna be hopefully tackling them all in order if we can uh keep the trend up yeah i i warned you that we uh that we tend to ramble so i'm not surprised that we missed our five minute mark that we were aiming for that was okay i think we we are able to get a lot of really cool information because there really is a lot to talk about for for each song i think the cage we got almost uh 17 minutes or so (laughs) well it was the first one so you know we probably had extra stuff to say about the creation of the band and everything that is true we did get into the history of the band too, but one thing that I really thought was nice is we got into a little bit of the discussion about what it's like to play the song live and how often it got played and how it got rotated in and out of the set list. And uh... Uh, one other thing I think we forgot to mention during our discussion is that the cage being on the first album is actually a uh, bit of controversy for us with some of the hardcore Trek fans because we always say that we're doing all of the episodes in broadcast order and then the cage is on the first album as the first song but it didn't get broadcast first so a lot of times when we tell people they're like oh you're going to do 79 songs and we're like no we're doing 80 and then they look confused and then we have to explain that the cage is being counted as its own song uh yeah i can see you getting called out on that uh, was did that come up with the convention at all oh many times yeah <laughs> uh you, you, usually that's where it happens like if we're at our booth at a convention and someone will come up and we'll give them our spiel if they've never heard of us and then that's where like the questions start to come up uh usually they you know if they're if they're like a hardcore fan they'll ask us why is the cage first or whatever and then the then they'll start asking us the the notorious question of what are you guys going to do after the original series and we don't have an answer for that so (laughs) well maybe by the time we get to the end of of this series you will have an answer for that i hope so (laughs) well you uh you're also involved in uh some other uh another band right uh at the moment i am yeah um both andy and i are in a a uh, a Guns N' Roses tribute band. Very cool. I saw you post on Facebook some some upcoming gigs. Yeah, yeah, we I mean, we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Um that band is called G and F and R. And nice. uh I mean, if, if anybody's interested, both Fark and I are in it and uh it, it's not just like a cover band, like we actually dress up as the original lineup of Guns N' Roses and we kind of take on their personalities when we perform, so there's a lot of that like 80s rock attitude. Plus our friend Jason uh, Bambury, he's our Axel, and man, he 
he is Axel when he's on that stage, and it is the f- most funniest thing to watch because it's so ridiculous. That's pretty awesome. Do you guys have any YouTube videos up? There are some YouTube videos. Uh, I think uh, Jason posted them. I think if, if you just search GNFNR, you can probably find them. If you, if We have a Facebook page, so if you go to that, uh, follow it through the five-year mission page, I'm sure you can probably find it that way. Awesome. Awesome. There's uh, links to the videos on there. Oh, very cool. So we'll 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 add that into the show notes for this episode on the the website. So uh, you know, keep an eye out for that and, and check that out and check out the link. And uh, so we're gonna throw now to the the uh, interview that we did with all five of the five year mission guys about the first track on the year one album, The Cage. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> All right, so we're starting today with the first track from the Year One album, and that is The Cage, uh, written by Mr. Mike Rittenhouse. Uh, yes, that's me. <laughs> I-, I was laughing at Chris giving it the thumbs down. <laughs> so, Mike, can you jump in a little bit about the inspiration behind the writing of the song? So he has to organize his notes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I only have a few notes. That, that song kind of just came about because I was toying around with the idea of writing a song for all of the episodes and originally I was going to do them in production order so I started writing the first one which was the cage and that was before anybody else was in the band wow it was before, a one band that was before the band yeah. existed I was going to do everything myself uh, play all the instruments and write all the songs preposterous <laughs> <laughs> he had seen me do this several years previous and decided it was a good idea I uh, I quickly decided that that was not the best idea so i brought noah in and then everybody else so anyway um back to the notes back back to the cage (laughs) (laughs) the the cage is uh pretty much the first of everything for us uh it was the first song written the first song on the first album it was the first song we played at our first show and as the first song that we've all played together as a band when andy came in to audition and for a, for a long time, it was never off the set list. It, yeah. it probably stayed on the set list longer than anything, any other song. Yeah, rightfully so. It's a it's a great song. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're going to be hearing that a lot from me over the course of this series. That's good. <laughs> Keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's wondering, uh, in the second verse, the ah in the background is Patrick. I was totally going to ask that. That's that's after the uh, they burrow in your headline, right? Yes, yes. It is. I was totally going to ask that. That that has inspired uh, Noah to yell something at the end of every line in the verses when we play it live. <laughs> I can't I can't play that without yelling something. Me either. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the the only other thing that uh, I had wanted to say was that uh, we had kind of an argument when we were recording it uh, about whether or not to use that opening riff. Oh yeah, and mm-hmm. because we were worried that we might get sued, <laughs> that was so early on in the process. If, if right. anybody out there is listening to this that wants to sue, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also debated on using the uh, the clips. Yeah, the, the uh, clips. Pike. Yeah. We uh, Pike. there's a clip of Pike actually in, in the song. Uh, what what was it he says? Yeah, we're not we're, here. We're neither of us. Yeah. A menagerie yeah. In the cage. And we, yeah, we we it's debated about five on. Seconds. Yeah, we we debated on whether or not to use that, but uh, in the end we decided nobody's gonna buy this. So yeah, <laughs> o- o- only twenty people are gonna have this thing when we're done. So it's two thousand physical copies later. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 one thing I really liked about this song was the, how he kind of shifted point of views in it, where where he's kind of talking about it almost from Pike's point of view during the verses. But then during the choruses, it's almost Mike as the TV watcher saying, you know, you're not Captain Kirk. I don't, you know, who are you doing all these things that Captain Kirk usually does? Yeah. And I just thought that was a really, you know, really cool way to, to go about writing that song. And this was the only song that I had when I asked Noah to join. So I, apparently it was good enough that he wanted to continue doing it. It was, it was the awkward moment alone in the car in the freezing cold that actually did it. I didn't have to listen to any songs. Okay. 
So interesting, if they, this was the song that was written before the band was formed, I was wondering, after li- listening to the entire album, I know that, that both Patrick and Chris make references to this song in their Menagerie 1 and 2. Is that intended, or was that just something that they decided to do on their own? That was, in fact, Mike's stipulation for us. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's well, right. That, Since that... footage from the cage is used in Menagerie 1 and 2, we wanted to use some part of the cage in our two songs. For the menageries. Yeah, as as I said earlier, I planned on doing it all myself, and originally I was going to make those songs sound very similar to the cage, and use a lot of the same uh, like music or lyrics. And so when we decided that everyone was going to write all the songs, and we these two guys ended up getting the menageries, I that was the thing I told them was that they still had to use something from the cage when they wrote their songs. And we, we did we them the independently. <laughs> yeah, we used the same, basically the same part of the song, but we didn't. Uh, we did them independently. We, we didn't a discussion about. We didn't yeah. hear each other's until yeah. we were done writing. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty funny. Like they they used the exact same thing, and we just weren't expecting it. Yeah, and it, well, and yours is uh, it's the chorus. You're not my hero, and it's from the TV. You know, the viewer's perspective, and I use the same thing, but it's it's not, it's from pe- people in in the show like perspective. Like this guy is nothing. You know? And mine is from Pike's perspective. Yeah. <clears throat> So it was, all, it was all the same words, but from different views. Isn't there also some almost <clears throat> identical chord progressions? Uh, they like different key, but the yeah, same. Yeah, very similar. The the choruses on the two menageries are both a very similar chord progression to the chorus on the cage, which uh, I, I I don't know if was if it was necessarily intentional. I think maybe yours was slightly intentional. Mine wasn't. It, uh, yeah, it might have been. Um, I remember noodling. It was actually we were in here in in uh, here house, and which that's where I came up with that riff for Menagerie Two, and that just kind of and I just went went off of that. So it, it was never. It may have been subconscious, but I was. It was never intentional. Mine was actually one of my three stock chord progressions that I use in every song. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I think we mentioned it when we did our our discussion with you back for the convention, but how do you? Assign songs. How do you decide who's going to do what? The, the process has evolved. Um, yeah. But for the first album, we basically, uh, Mike and Noah had already written several songs. And so when Chris and I joined, we basically just scrambled to grab whatever was left yeah. <laughs> for the yeah. first 16 yeah. of the yeah, this, episodes. This album was definitely different than the rest of them as far as. Well, and when we started, I had, you know, I had seen some of the major episodes like Tribbles and, and uh, City on the Edge of Forever, but they were. <clears throat> Just, there, there were very few that I'd seen that well, I, I came to find out as I was watching through the the episodes, um, and so all pretty much all the episodes of the first album I hadn't seen them before, so I, it was just kind of picking and choosing from what sounded like it might be kind of cool. <laughs> so it was uh, it was very actually I had some um, I had a few DVDs that had some random Star Trek episodes on them, and I went through those to see what I had. And those kind of decided what I wanted, because I knew that I had them on hand. Since then, it's pretty much jarred out of a hat. Yeah. You can trade amongst each other if you both agree to it. And I don't think we did any trading for year two, did we? I think year two was you get what you get. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think we did any trading. Yeah, we didn't. I think. I think. I, actually, I think I traded someone for tomorrow was yesterday because yeah. I had an idea for it. Yeah, you did. and that was yeah, one of my right. old and, favorites. Uh, I think you traded me. Yeah. 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 Again, we're all, pretty... and also all of my songs would have been like at the end of the album otherwise. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, because then on year year yeah, three so we broke them up into groups again. of four, yeah. so that nobody would end up at all at the end or all at the beginning. So it's it's an evolving kind of thing. Yeah. And We're like I mentioned sensitive. before, we don't want to tie ourselves down because if we do something and it pretty much works, but I mean, we don't want to say, well, we have to do that again just because we've done it before. <clears throat> right. So we, we're, we're always trying to do things the way they work the best. And sometimes we, you know, some of us really want a song because or an episode because we have an idea for it. Right. And most of us have been pretty forthcoming if someone's really passionate about that particular song. Well, so, for for year for doing that year for trading four, and I had you know we chose for year four, and I was the only one who hadn't opened an album yet, so I got a private little war just kind of by default. Actually, I ended up drawing it anyway, but if I hadn't, I would have gotten it just because we'd already talked about it. And on a side note, when we get to year four, there'll be yet a twelfth song of Spock's Brain. 
right, yep. Mike? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, wow. There's one more Spock's brain for year four that has yet been written. Yeah, because for Tribbles, we did we did the one song each plus uh, kind of the Coda to Mine and um, and and the George Takei song. Right. But we didn't – we just decided we were just going to keep – when we drew for uh, year three, <clears throat> I drew Tribbles, and so we just kept the same song. And uh, we just – and that – I, know, I, I didn't. That. I didn't have an extra song for year three, so I actually only had three new songs for year three. So we decided that we didn't want to limit somebody again for year four. So that's why we decided to just to have whoever drew uh, Spock's brain got to write an extra one, and that was mine. Brain. Well, I think you and I traded, right? Because I drew Spock's brain. Eventually. Yeah, you you drew Spock's brain, and I, and you didn't want it, so eventually I let you give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I wrote two songs for Spock's brain. So, and then uh, you wrote two songs. Yeah. The, so cage. the cage. Huh? I, I went the cage. Um, my, my main <laughs> early memory of the cage is, so you know, after we had learned the song and we're practicing it, um, at our very first show, the day of the show, I got a message from Mike that he'd lost his voice and wanted to know if I could sing it <laughs> a few hours That's before right. our first yeah. show. And I'd never sang the lead part before, and so we had a little bit of, I, yeah, we had a little bit I, of a, I ended up singing the cage Yeah, you ended show, up singing it. But uh, we did. That was we, the mail. Yeah, yeah, we we, we did the cage and Mud's Women, and I had I had Chris show. sing the high parts for me on Mud's Women. Oh yeah, Mike. So, getting to the actual the way you you compose is it normally the same? And when you're dealing with these Star Trek you know theme songs, when you're sitting down to write the cage, do you have an existing piece of music that you're gonna sort of try and fit your lyrics into, or do you write the lyrics and then come up with music for it? How did you how did you put the cage together? Well, every every song has been different for me. The Cage, honestly, it's it's been so long ago that I don't really remember. But I I know that uh, I I didn't have anything written before I started working on it. I think I just had kind of an idea for like a melody, and then some words just kind of came to me that went with it, and then I just kind of fleshed it out. But I didn't have anything written ahead of time. Uh, whereas nowadays I tend to just grab songs that I wrote when I was 15 and change the words. <laughs> <laughs> That's seriously true. <laughs> and how much are you actually referencing the episode during your songwriting? Is it one of those things where you watch the episode once um, or are you going back at different points to, to see if you can, you can get any sort of, you know, new lyrics from, from watching it. Um, uh, again, it's, it's different with each song. Sometimes they really just come to me after one viewing and, uh, some of them I have to watch like 20 times and I still have to force some lyrics like a piece of the action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the, yeah, with, with, with the cage, uh, I think I watched it maybe two or three times and just uh, the lyrics to that are, are not really specific. Um, a lot of my early songs, I was trying to be kind of vague with my lyrics because I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to do with the band. Yeah, we had even toyed with the idea, right, of making it so no one else except like a diehard Trek fan would actually know oh, yeah. that they're about Star Trek. They would just seemingly look like pop songs, but if you really paid attention, you would know that they were talking about the episode. And then Patrick wrote Mary, and it was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, any closing thoughts on The Cage? It's it's always a lot of fun to play. I mean, we've played it four years now, and we still have a blast playing it. It's, you know, we ha we opened with it for a long time and kind of, I mean, you know, you kind of get tired of it. And more than that, you think, well, maybe people are tired of hearing this. You know, we didn't want to be predictable. Well, too predictable. And we have a lot more songs now, so... Um, you know, we don't play, we try not to play it quite as often, but whenever we do, it's always a good time and people always enjoy it. So it's, I think it's one of our, it's just one of those songs that kind of a defining song for us. I would say even for the keyboard player, it is fun to play live. It's one of the, the few songs that I can move both hands at the same time on the keyboard. And jump. Up and I can do like a full body, two legs off the ground, jump up to the bottom of the keyboard. That's always fun. I learned that from watching you, you know. Looking like a guy from Fish Burger. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of the few songs we have that we can just bust out if we need to at a show without even practicing it, yeah. and it sounds like we've been practicing it all along. And if you watch carefully, I'm on bass, and from time to time I'll I'll, I'll jump, so, you know, like when it comes back in after the after the slow the soft part, 
and sometimes I almost fall down. I haven't fallen down yet. <laughs> when we were at Concave last year, I came really close to biting it. There was a wall behind me that caught me. It's even on film. It was close. Yeah, it is. You can kind of see it in the video. Mike's usually the one that falls down, but yeah, it'll if, be me eventually. If, if our roles were reversed, I would fall down. <laughs> <laughs> And that about wraps it up for this first episode of What Are Little Songs Made Of? We hope you enjoyed this discussion about five-year missions, first song, The Cage, and we will see you next Wednesday. Mm-hmm.